that's better. Mm. Welcome back to another episode of Sugar in the Raw. I am your host, this is Sugar Kane from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 11. And yes, bitch, the setup is different today, girl. Look, I was doing some lives with Miss Dusty Ray Bottoms today, and I was like, girl, let's just keep up the same setup and let's get this rolling, honey, because, you know, I'm lazy with this corona, girl. All I want to be doing is watching me some Netflix and laying on the couch and not doing this shit. So for you kids to have this on time, this is what you get. So, um, without further ado, I am so excited about this week's episode. Uh, let's get on into the bitch. Cheers. Yes, y'all. So, we are back in the workroom, and Miss Rock'em Sakura has had to sashay away, girl. I am devastated. She is one of my favorites. I am so sad to see her go. Uh, like many of y'all, we felt like she could have and should have stayed longer. Uh, but those aren't the way the game is being played this time. So, unfortunately, she had to leave. Um, the girls, you know, are singing their sugar coulda wood. Miss Britta's upset. She feels like she should not be in the bottom. Uh, Miss Nikki, you know, she is feeling this need to show off her goofy side. She doesn't understand uh, why the judges aren't seeing her personality. And here we go again, girl. The girls are always coming for this little Aiden girl. Look, I am so tired of it. Like, it is happening again. They always come for her for this and that. Look, yes, I get it. Last week, she didn't put the effort in. So that makes sense. And I get it. I get it. But, girl, they've been really riding her hardcore. So, um, you know, uh, what I do like about Miss Aiden is that she is fighting back. She is not letting these girls uh, come for her without a fight. So you better, bitch. So it is a brand new day in the workroom, and I'm living for the banter. Uh, I forget who asks, you know, who is the trade of the group, but it doesn't even matter because the best comeback is Miss Heidi in Closet saying that Jan would be the trade of the season uh, if she has some boy brows. <laughs> I'm living for the shade. I think it's amazing. These girls are hilarious, and girl, Miss Heidi has always got something to say, and I am living for it. So mama comes in the workroom and can we just uh, point out that the bitch is wearing nothing but turquoise. Yes, honey. Okay. I love it. I love me some turquoise, as you know. Miss um, Rue is looking stunning, uh, but she is here to get these girls started. So for this week, there is no mini challenge and Mama Rue gets us straight into the maxi challenge, honey. And it is an improv challenge, girl. Ooh. Yes, these are my favorite. I am so excited. I cannot wait. Uh, she lets the girls know that they will be doing Gay's Anatomy. Child, this is about to be everything. Um, so, you know, she's now trying to figure out, like, who um, the roles are going to be. So she has to assign some team captains. So the girls are picking the pills, and the two girls that end up being the captains are Miss uh, Gigi Good and Miss Widow Von Du. No? Nikki Doll. Fuck. So, the girls are working through the roles. Um, you know, it is like, like Mama Ruth says, it's Black China all over again. Um, Miss Nikki Doll and uh, Gigi, you know, they take their input of the girls to see what roles they want to take, but ultimately, they're the ones who get to decide. Everyone pretty much gets their role, except for Widow and Aiden. Aiden is level-headed about this. She gets the fact that, like, look, I didn't get the role that I got or that I wanted, but I still got to, like, play the game and do well because she ain't trying to go home. Widow, on the other hand, <laughs> she is not having it. She is mad. She is complaining. Uh, I love when Mama Rue comes back in the workroom and starts talking to the girls because then she's just like, is this another Black China moment? Uh, yes, it is another Black China moment, bitch. Um, Widow is not having it. She's still mad about it. Um, but you know, all the girls seem pretty confident, especially the New York girls. And I'm looking at these New York girls because you know, we got chops in New York City. Um, I mean, I didn't in the Mariah challenge, but we don't talk about that anymore. So as the girls are working through their thing, here we go again with Miss Britta Filter Girl. She is not feeling Aiden. She's feeling like, you know, Aiden didn't do well. I'm teamed with her again. I'm gonna have to carry her again. And look, girl, Aiden is just trying to do her job. She's having a good time. She's trying to figure out the role. It looks like she's probably gonna have some issues. But um, girl, I just can't with these girls. They're just like literally coming so hard for this poor girl. Um, I don't understand it. Um, but what can you do? So it's time to record the challenge and we find out that Carson Kresley is our director. Yes, bitch. Um, the first group up is Miss Jackie Cox, Gigi, Britta, and Jaden Essence Hall. Well, 
in this first scene, we are finding that Miss Jada is struggling, girl. She is not getting her lines down. It is not looking good. Uh, we're hoping that she can pull it together, especially myself, because she is one of my favorites. Um, but the other girls seem to be doing pretty well, and it seems to go really great. So this first team, aside from Jada and her little flubs here and there, like, is, you know, pretty solid. Next, they cut to Miss Heidi and Crystal, and they're like the duo that kind of reminds me of the Opulence duo. It's not like the best role or the best line. It's kind of weird. Uh, this is always not a good thing. Um, I feel like, you know, as a queen, if you're reading through the script, you're trying to find something that is funny in that script or something that's kind of prominent so that you don't have to like, it's hard to deliver in like a couple of lines, bitch. Uh, so already from this scene, I can tell that like, uh, this is not gonna fare well. <laughs> As we're going through, the girls that are really killing it, Jan Sport is killing it. She's doing really, really well. Sherry Pie is doing really, really well. Widow, who was complaining about her role, is killing the game in the rehearsal. It's funny, I'm cracking up, Carson's laughing, the girls are laughing. Um, it's so exciting to see her, you know, kind of break from that, that bad juju girl, you know, cause she wasn't really feeling that. So uh, she's doing well and I'm super excited for her. Uh, so bitch, you better. Saludos. So they add, um, Miss Nikki into <laughs> widow scene and it's funny. Nikki looks funny and actually I don't think she actually did poorly. I think she did actually was really funny. The soccer blah was so cute to me. I was cracking up. Um, I don't really feel like she's struggling as hard um, as uh, I thought she was going to be. So I think she's actually in pretty good shape. Next up is uh, Aiden and Britta. So this scene is really kind of interesting. Um, Aiden is cute. I think she's funny. I don't think she's doing anything like weird or bad. Um, and her choices seem fine. Uh, Carson is kind of being weird about it. So I didn't really quite kind of get that. That was kind of weird to me uh, because I thought Aiden was great. Um, Britta was the one that was actually struggling in that scene. She wasn't really taking the notes. Uh, that's what I felt, but who am I? I don't really know. Um, so this, obviously there's gonna be some issues in this particular scene. Uh, I don't know who's gonna be the issue, uh, but like for me, I thought Aiden was fine, but you know, you never know, girl. So we're back in the workroom and the girls are getting ready for the runway and most of them are feeling you know, pretty strong about what they did in uh, the runway. Um, so the girls are just talking, they're getting some banter and we start to talk about mothers. You wanna talk about mothers? Uh, your mama is so fat. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, not that kind of mothers. Um, but like... <laughs> Seriously though, we start to get these really amazing touching moments. We find out that Jackie has not come out to her mom or her mom has no idea that she is doing drag. She doesn't know she's on the show. Um, she starts to break down about this relationship with her mother and it's so sad and I'm just like, my heart is bleeding for her. It is so, 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 so sad. And then we come to Widow, and Widow has a story about her mother, and then we find out that her mother passed when she was 17, and it is just absolutely devastating. Girl, when I'm telling you, they got me with the waterworks, girl. I was crying, I could not handle it. Um, these poor, poor young things. Um, it was really a, a, a sad moment, but a beautiful moment, because you get to know the girls and get to know their backgrounds and kind of like where they're coming from. Um, so it was really intense for a minute, girl. Like, we definitely need this runway. So uh, can we just get onto the runway, please? Thank you. So it is time for the runway. And this week's theme is capes, honey. Ooh, I love me a cape, bitch. Um, look, Mother Rue looks stunning. Stunning, stunning. She looks incredible. I swear every runway that she is uh, coming down, she is looking even more beautiful, even more young. Uh, she looks incredible. So killing it, killing it, killing it. Uh, your special guest this week is Normani. Yes, bitch. Um, gorgeous, stunning, living. Um, so let's just get into this runway because I am so excited about this cape look. So your first up is Miss Jada Essence Hall. And you know what? This bitch looks gorgeous. She looks stunning. It's like this, she calls it like a Jimmy Neutron look. I love the burnouts or the cutouts. The cape is stunning. I mean, girl, this look is on point. It looks good. Uh, you did the assignment, bitch. Mm-hmm. Next up, we got Miss Britta Filter. She is giving us this um, dominatrix slash Red Riding Hood fantasy. Um, 
She looks beautiful. Her body is gorgeous. I love this whole corsetry look. Um, the cape though, girl, I see the cape, but I don't see the cape. Like, I just, it's a cape challenge. So it really should be about the fucking cape. That's how I believe. Um, it's weird that it's sheer. Uh, I don't know how they're gonna like that if they, or if they're gonna like it. I mean, she looks beautiful. Uh, but for me, I'm a little nervous about her cape because it's not um, as uh, stand out-ish as I think it should be. But then again, I'm just here drinking tequila. So next up we got Miss Jackie Cox. And girl, let me just say, I love this girl, but look, if the main element of your look can be purchased on Amazon Prime for $14.99, you probably shouldn't wear it on the red thing, girl. I just, it just, it, it wasn't, it wasn't the tea. Uh, I wasn't feeling it. It just wasn't the look. Uh, uh, her good thing she was a good actress in her challenge, girl, because uh, this runway is not cute. Mm -mm. Next up, we got another New York City queen, Miss Jan Sport. Um, I like the theatrics of it, but I'm not feeling the outfit. I don't think it's, I don't really like it. Um, I think she was gonna be like a parachuter. So she kind of did a little jump, like a skydiver, and then she took the cape out and whatever. Um, it's a cute concept, but like, um, if the runway is about cape, I need drama. I need like, a, you, like you know what would have been a good cape? Like if it was, you remember like uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, the bitch that was on top of the bus and then the things were just flying back for ages and ages and ages, girl, that's a cape. Like, give me drama, girl. Give me, give me some drama. It just was a little too simple for me. Mm. Next up, we got Miss Gigi Good. And let me just say, she is repping one of my favorite movies of all time. I love me some True Beverly Hills. Um, but like, I just wasn't feeling the look on her. I needed her to drag it up. I needed uh, it to, there was something, it looked better. That outfit looked better on uh, the actress in the movie than it did on Gigi. And it should have been the other way around for the runway. That's how I feel. Like if you're gonna bring something back that's like super iconic that way, then you need to bring it back better than the original. And I felt like the original was better than hers. So um, I like it. I appreciate the effort and the look, but I just, it wasn't, it wasn't my cup of tea, girl. Next up, we got Miss Sherry Pie, and I'm gonna say that this look is absolutely ridiculous. It is stunning. Um, I love that it was like Elvis. Like, who would fucking do Elvis? And then the cape was like, that look was all about the cape. It was beautiful. I love the way, um, uh, the way it was revealed in the end. Whoever made this look, or whoever designed this look, um, it was impeccable. It was impeccable. It was a really, really creative idea, um, and the execution of this design was like on point. So kudos to the designer. I don't know who you are. Um, I heard that it might have been Florence, but I don't think it was. Um, I think um, Alexa said it was another designer. So kudos, kudos, kudos. That was like a stunning uh, execution of that design. I loved it. Mm. Next up, we got one of my favorites, Miss Heidi and Closet Girl. Uh, I love this bitch. She's so cute. Uh, but the outfit, girl, I don't know. Um, it kind of also was reminiscent of Jackie Cox's Amazon wings. Uh, it just wasn't, mm, I wasn't really feeling it. Up next, we got Crystal Method Girl. And you know, let me just say, this bitch looks stunning. I love this look. The color combination is beautiful. The cape is beautiful. Um, she looks so, so gorgeous. Um, and it is like one of my favorites. Uh, you work, bitch. You work, bitch. Live. Next up, we got Miss Aiden Zane. And bitch, you better give me that Silence of the Lambs, girl. I would let you eat me, girl. <laughs> I love this look. She looks stunning. She looks beautiful. I love that she didn't do a dramatic cape. But the way she did the cape and the way the look came together, it still was a feature of the look and it was beautiful, bitch. She looks stunning. I live, 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 girl. Mm-hmm. That's how you do it. Next up, we got Miss Widow Von Do, honey. And she is giving me some watermelon couture, honey. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, this lick, this lick, this look is ridiculous. It is just silly. It's fun. It isn't my favorite, but I love that she took like a uh, chance on it. It's campy. Uh, you know, it is about the cape. Uh, it's not my favorite, but it, it made me laugh and it made me smile on the runway um, in a good way. Uh, so, you know, you know, it, it wasn't quite the hit, but uh, it was cute. It was cute. <laughs> And last up, we have uh, Miss Nikki Doll. Uh, girl, I mean, she's so beautiful. She's, Nikki is so gorgeous. I love this uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier uh, corset fantasy, but bitch, the cape is non-existent. If this was a, a, a corset uh, runway, house down would have been gorge, uh, but it's a cape runway, um, and the cape literally looked like an afterthought. So, um, mm, she looked like she gonna be in trouble this week. Um, but work, uh, come through with Cape Runway and I live. Honey. So the girls are on the runway and it's time to watch Gay's Anatomy. And let me just say, this is so ridiculous. This is a really good challenge. I love this improv acting challenge, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, it's hilarious. My standouts for this week were A Widow, for sure, um, killed it. Jan was amazing. Um, and I thought Aiden did really well. Um, cause they were setting her up like she wasn't, uh, and by they, I mean the girls were, um, and she did really, really great. Um, you know, Gigi surprised me. She was actually really funny and the bitch can act. Um, so it's, it was a cute, it's a, it's a cute one, but I would say uh, Widow really slayed it. So, uh, it was a good little work thing, girl. What do you call it? Gay's Anatomy. Amen. Drink more tequila grapes. I don't know. So the girls who I think are in trouble in this one, um, the Fork Duo girl, it just wasn't cute. It didn't read well. It felt so left, honey. Um, they tried, they really did try to make it a thing. Uh, that fell flat for me. Um, I think those are the ones that have fell flat for me. Um, Nikki was funny. It seemed like she was struggling a little bit. They made it seem like she were, but I thought she was funny. So, I don't know. I think the Fork Duo girl, ooh, not cute. Mm. So it is time for the critiques, and we find out uh, very quickly that your winner this week is Miss Sherry Pine. Right, so it is time for the critiques, and you know, Mother Ruth sends those safe girls back to uh, Untucked. Um, I forget who they were, uh, but let me see who's left. Jada, Crystal, Nikki, Heidi, and Britta. So as we're getting through the critiques, we're finding out, you know, that... Um, Jada, she struggled a little bit, but they liked her runway. Um, Britta, they didn't like her runway. Uh, they did or did not like her acting, I cry, I don't remember. Um, Heidi, they did not like her runway. They did not think that she did uh, that incredible um, at the acting challenge. Um, Crystal, they loved her runway. They thought that her acting was fine. Um, so she seems to be safe. Nikki, they said her runway, although she was beautiful, wasn't quite it, and that her acting was not great. So, it is very, very clear from this critiques that your bottom queens are going to be Nikki and Miss Heidi in Closet. Devastating, girl. I'm literally shook. Uh, these are two queens that are like, uh, like are stunning, are favorites, and so uh, she is getting real, honey. Um, Obviously, we know that your winner this week is Miss Sherry Pie. But these bottoms, honey. Ooh, child. This lip sync is about to be a good one. Hopefully, Nikki does better than she did last week, bitch. Oh, my God. Can we please talk about RuPaul and her obsession with Elder Barge and Crystal Method's hair? I fucking live for it. Um, I hope it goes on for the entire season. I can listen to this song every time. Let me hear the minute. I don't even know what the is it not it's not the rhythm of the night. Is that the right song? Am I singing the right song? Am I singing a Gloria Stefan song? Girl, who knows? Alright, so now we get into the nitty motherfucking gritty. It is untucked, bitch. And let me just say thank you, thank you, thank you to all the girls who delivered today. This was the best episode of Untucked I've seen in a while. Um, I was fucking living for the drama. Bitch, 
Britta is shady boots. She ain't trying to play. She is pissed, girl. Look, I will say this about Britta. She is being shady boots. She is kind of being that girl. Um, she, uh, I've seen quotes that people say she's delusional and all this and that. And to her defense, let me just say this. Um, Britta Filter is a big queen in New York City. She has a reputation, a great reputation in New York City. Uh, she performs everywhere. Um, she's won a bunch of awards uh, in New York City nightlife. So she has come to Drag Race or to the Drag Race stage with this um, an amazing clout behind her, right? So, but once you get to Drag Race, you realize that like everyone else is just as good or better. Um, and uh, it's hard. So I think she's kind of getting a uh, weird, like kind of awakening or like a, I don't know if she's getting a wake up call, but she's definitely, uh, cause she's not waking up to the call. Um, <laughs> but she you knows she's feeling the pressure girl that it is it is not what she thought it was. Uh, and unfortunately I think she's taking it out on Miss Aiden Zane. Look, I am not a psychologist. I am not a psychiatrist. I do not know these things. This is just an observation that I have. She is coming for Aiden way too hard. Um, and I love that Aiden does not back down. This bitch finally sticks up for herself, full the force down. Cause all these bitches coming for her. Britta's coming for her. Nikki's coming for her. Jada was trying to say some shit, but I think Aiden just had it. And like, so it, obviously Aiden like interrupted her and what have you. And then we find out that Jada didn't really have anything bad to say about her, but like, it's, girl, she's been getting it since day motherfucking one from everyone, from Widow, from the whole crew. Um, and it just, shit hits the fan. Shit hits the fan. I'm living for it. Um, Jan's outtakes are my fucking favorite. She's like, I I love it because she's just like, is this really happening? Like, what the fuck? She's hitting the shade, but she's being really, really silly. Uh, the memes that are going to come out of this are everything. I cannot wait. Um, but look, girl, it was about to, it was about to happen. Uh, you know, Untucked has been very friendly, getting to know, and like, now the pressure's on, girl, bitches are going home, um, and other girls are starting to get uh, away with, not away with some shit, or like, you know, you know how this shit works. Um, look, um, so I love that, you know, Miss Aiden stuck up for herself, uh, <laughs> but Miss Heidi in Closet, thank you, bitch. Finally, uh, Aiden had no allies, and I love that she came up and was like, fuck you hoes, leave her alone. Um, and uh, so kudos, uh, Aiden, that is a true sister to come to your defense. Um, but yeah, girl, uh, the shit is getting real. Britta is a uh, girl. She's, she's, I, I'm, this was a very interesting uh, thing to see, girl, because now she's not playing nice. She's not playing no games. And she is specifically coming for Aiden. And I'm literally like, girl, you are uh, picking on uh, someone in the room that uh, you shouldn't be picking on. Like, you should maybe be focused on the girls who are winning shit so that you can hopefully win shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it was, it's very, it's a very weird dynamic. It, whatever. Anyways, so all that said, this Untucked was everything. I'm fucking living for it. I cannot wait till next week. Girl, liquor these bitches up and let's get fucking sickening. <laughs> Such a shady bitch. Such a shady bitch. Cheers. Work, y'all. So we are back on the main stage and it is lip sync for your lifetime. Okay, look. Um, the song, I love me some Kim Petras, but this is not a RuPaul's Drag Race song. They always pick some weird ass songs sometimes, right? And like, you're like, how are these girls gonna like make this entertaining? And they started out and I was like, oh God, here we go. Um, I have yet to see Nikki perform. I, I'm not like coming for her. I'm just saying I have yet to see her perform. Like everyone says she's an amazing performer. Like, um, like, you know, like very like acrobatic and shit like that. To that being said, she really did perform this song really, really well. It was very like beautiful and gorgeous, but like I could see her really fighting in that, um, in that lip sync. Uh, but Heidi just, you know, at first I was a little nervous about Miss Heidi and then she, then she started to do the fucking robot. And once she did that robot, I was like, oh, game over. Like now she's, now she's going in. Girl, she was doing the robot. She was doing the Naomi small slide, but bitch, when she got on the all fours and just went all the way backwards on the runway, I was living, I was dying. This shit is hilarious. Um, as you know, she won and got a chance to say, uh, she did not have, girl, can I speak today? Um, let me take a quick sip, let me take a quick sip. 
So as I said, um, Miss Heidi got to um, Shantae and stay. Um, but unfortunately, Miss Nikki Doll had to sashay away. Um, New York City queen, my New York City sister, so sad to see you go. Um, but there's so many more amazing things ahead of you, ahead for you. Um, so work, I'm gonna do this again, because this is whack. Yes, y'all, so um, for this week's uh, Sugar's Sweet Tea, um, I didn't do my homework. Ugh. I didn't do my homework, girl. I didn't do, I didn't do my homework. <laughs> I don't have no sweet tea for y'all. I wish I had some sweet tea for y'all. Um, I'm going to uh, sit here. I'm gonna do, so this is what I'm gonna do. I didn't get the sweet tea together. So I'm gonna find some sweet tea for you about this episode. And I'm going to insert it here. This week's sweet tea is from Just Jan. She says that when they filmed Gay's Anatomy, they filmed her shove take with Gigi twice because the first time they did it, which she thinks might have been the one that aired, she shoved her so hard on accident, Gigi hit the floor. She didn't know her own strength. Yes! <laughs> Stupid, I know. Yes, y'all, thank you so much for tuning in to Sugar in the Raw. I had so much fun on this week's episode, girl. I'm so drunk. I need to not drink so much. Um, but I will say this, this margarita bitch, mm, it's fucking divine. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. All those beautiful, lovely things. Um, girl, it was a good little episode. I can't wait for Untucked next week, girl. Mm -hmm. I love you kids. Stay safe, stay healthy, and what? Stay home. I love you. Bye.